How's it? I'm Honan, and this is our first episode of K-Pod, is what we're going to be calling it so far. It's a K-pop podcast, and um, on the screen that I have right here, from top right, is Oliver, and he has the most knowledge here about K-pop, and bottom is me. I have, I would say I'm very mids, and on the left is going to be your basic bitch, basically, over there (laughs) (laughs) on K-pop knowledge. And, on my uh, screen, I'm I'm recording on the bottom. So, <laughs> yeah. in the future, some of these episodes will probably uh, be live on Twitch at the same time to be kind of an interesting thing with Twitch chat involved and everything too. But this is our first episode, very first. So we're just you guys are seeing the starts of probably what's going to be a cringy episode here so far as we try to figure <laughs> everything out. But um, let's just jump into the. You guys want to just jump into the first topic? Do it. I've heard. So we are doing most accessible k-pop artist to a non-k-pop fan oliver do you want to start off who you think that would be okay uh (laughs) so i guess the obvious i have to get the obvious one out of the way first right and say bts yeah um because bts have got a huge catalog at this point with like loads of different types of music with a simple, easily to digest message of loving yourself, right? Which is yeah. something everyone can get behind. Mm-hmm. Um, plus, they have the advantage of being good looking <laughs> and charming. <laughs> and I mean, you can say that for any group ever, yeah, but yeah, like, for sure. it, uh, it definitely can appeal to people. I feel like it, they have a really good like generational appeal. Like they can appeal to middle aged women as well as the teenagers and everyone in between, right? Yeah. Um, and they appeal to men as well, which I think is something that some groups perhaps they don't quite have that the same like wide appeal a- across people of all genders. But yeah, yeah, definitely. I the feel BTS, like too, I think, because sure. they have music that is very uh, foreign feeling early on in K-pop, like nothing you mm. find in the Western market. But then they do have stuff. I feel like for people from like the U.S. or from Western countries that is kind of similar to uh the styles we have here where people can digest it easier and stuff too like dynamite i feel like in general is just a song i heard everywhere no matter where i went for the entire year basically like you walk into any store and it was just like instantly playing dynamite yeah dynamite was the first thing i heard like on a on the tv just like playing in in commercials in the uk like yeah oh (laughs) that this is some this is something something this is when you realize how big they're getting yeah yeah well, I, I don't remember when it happened, but I just remember like all of a sudden they were they were in the US and they were mm-hmm. everywhere. It wasn't just like, oh yeah, no, they 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 were on like every talk show, they were on commercials, you know, it was just all of a sudden. So I don't know if that was like a like a some sort of label signing deal. Cause you know, you see that like international brands work with like, you know, Sony Music or or mm-hmm. you know, one of the larger labels, and then they're like, Oh, now you're coming over to the US for a while um did it happen that way or did it just no build bts started building up um so they first appeared i'm gonna get the name of the award show wrong i think it was the vmas back in 2017 i think was their first one and they just kind of everyone in america or they're like the music journalists maybe it was the bbmas one of those ones they saw them and were like oh they this is like not just a this is a thing thing like a lot of people turned up for this and then oh we'll invite them next year and then they kept releasing more music they kept breaking more records charting higher and higher and so they kept getting more and more invites so it did kind of go up on its own and now their company or their corporation owns like the same (laughs) or has the same connections to like ariana grande and justin bieber and they're all under the same umbrella now yeah the scooter scooter braun right i believe (laughs) yeah (laughs) It's a, I yeah. sorry the um my thought I got lost for a second but I know that with the award shows they started using BTS like just to gain popularity for that mm. award show like the Grammys was like BTS is gonna perform and then like showing them <laughs> at all the red carpet thing and then they totally screw them in the Grammys <laughs> yeah so, a lot of people were extremely happy about that yeah <laughs> yeah they using, screwed the weekend for clout too. is the the line I mean. That, I mean, ultimately, what else are they going to do, right? It, it, yeah. They get shit on if they snub them, <laughs> if yeah, they don't invite sure. them, and then they get shit on for if they don't give them an award. It's like, 
yeah i know it, it's different to award shows in uh in korea anyway where bts get like a half hour performance slot at the end of each one and pick yeah. up the grand prize <laughs> like every time <laughs> Yeah, that's a subject we'll have to remember for another time is the crazy amount of like uh, South Korean award shows there are and like performances from them. Because mm. I feel like in the US, we don't have like that level of something like a like a mama, it's called, right? Yeah. Or whatever. Like those, yeah. those are way more entertaining and crazy to me than like what we have, like the Grammys and stuff. Like, yeah, but just that there's, there's so many. Yeah, <laughs> oh, so yeah. Many. ridiculous amount of them. <laughs> No, I know you've Honan shown me a few like new ones all the time, and I'm just like, I'm like, is this like a everyday occurrence? Is there just like every day of the week there's like a different award show? Or we've, we've had a couple already. Like there's already been a few this year, and there'll be more just like constantly. Yeah. So real, real quick before we move too far ahead, I do want to touch on the fact, Oliver, you you are in officially in South Korea now, right? I am indeed in awesome. the, the fine district of Dongjaku in Seoul yes <laughs> that's awesome so yeah we'll definitely like well I mean I I don't know how much you want to go into it so we'll, we'll talk definitely in another episode of like you know once you're a little more settled and just like I, I know people would love to hear like I, like oh this is what I'm doing like uh sure. this is like my favorite food right now you know there's, there's so <laughs> many cool things so but anyways I just wanted to touch on that fact real quick yeah well, well me and him already have the you know the karaoke trip planned <laughs> we have to dress in our sure. cider outfits <laughs> do yeah. trot for like two hours <laughs> all right Absolutely. so our next subject is how listening to other genres of music makes you feel compared to k-pop mm. i guess this is one more for you guys because I'm guessing you guys are still listening to other genres. Of music. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would like to say, cause like the other day I was listening to Slayer on my drive. And then in that same playlist, it's changing to, you know, Madonna from Luna was on there. <laughs> it was like the, which that's a bop. If you haven't heard that, but it was uh, just the switch from, you know, like um, South of heaven to going into like Luna Madonna. My brain's just kind of like, I've changed, like, as I'm driving, you know, it's, like, the most brutal, like, song to just the complete opposite end of the spectrum, but I actually really, that's what I enjoy about it the most, I think, is it kind of gets, hits some part of my brain that metal isn't targeting or hitting mm -hmm. at all, I would say is what K-pop is personally doing for me, it's, like, a part of the brain I maybe didn't know I had interest in musically, and now that I have like a widespread of Red Velvet and all these other artists, metal is kind of sitting in this shelf and K-pop's in a shelf over here. And there's all the other stuff that fits kind of in between. I don't know how you feel about it, Gordon, but you can. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, for am I, wow, I just started yelling. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't sound yell at the mic. Oh, okay, good. Um, no, I, I guess for me, my interest in k-pop has always been that it is so many different styles of music um you know i mean just recently we started listening and, and we're pulling out a lot of funk elements that seem to be coming into the songs recently so i you you can hear a song a k-pop song you know the producer is like using a different style of music to create this blend right and it's almost like you see with like a lot of electronic music that's coming out i mean any electronic producers it's sampling stuff from older music or you know old hip-hop samples and old hip-hop samples come from music and they just you know basically recorded it on a tape deck and that's that's all it was it was like they'd go sample some you know uh jazz drummer and then they'd be like oh we're gonna throw this on our song so i think i think a lot of that is my interest is like that's how i was interested in hip-hop early on is like you know it's taking things from other music and creating this blend and i think um especially with like the newer stuff you're getting that a lot uh with k-pop music especially like these songs that are just like these ever-changing like crazy ones we listen to where it's just like you know 20 seconds of something and then the song completely changed 30 seconds later i i enjoy that part of it it has so many switch-ups yeah yeah like yeah. like yeah. almost like metal sometimes can and very like prog metal or like a really sure. far genre that's weird and metal k-pop in a mainstream genre of music will switch up more than like a prog <laughs> song on you sometimes it's really weird well that in itself would be an interesting question at some point is is k-pop mainstream and what is mainstream within k-pop and what is not mainstream within k-pop yeah. right um because i think that's an interesting point that 
stuff that's super experimental from a musical standpoint, like Esper's Next Level, for example. That's like a big song from a big company. That's not like some indie group that's doing that, like weird yeah. experimental stuff. I and mean, yeah. it has been that way forever. Like SM especially, their artists have always been doing that kind of thing. Like FFX, for example, Girls Generation. Like if you listen to uh, to I Got A Boy, people say that that's, the, the critics said that that was the most structurally variable mega hit since Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> that's insane. Which, <laughs> Which is quite quite strong words, right? Yeah. But at the same time, it's hard to it's hard to disagree when you listen to that song and it has like seven different yeah the speed changes. It's like and slows down. And then it's like, oh, actually, now we're gonna do like a diva song out of nowhere, and then like we're gonna have two bridges because that's the thing. Yeah, which is which is what was the the appeal for me for sure. Like after um, I feel like most genres of music that I was listening to traditional kinds of like indie and, and alternative rock and uh, like even electronic music as well it was all as sean said it was all hitting like one part of your brain like one it's targeted one specific part and like you can listen to a different genre and it gives you a different kick but with k-pop it hits like all of it <laughs> yeah yeah and that which is it's like you can have one group and you can get like a really chill r&b song a really hype electronic song some like dope rapping some powerful vocals all from the same group in the space of one mini album <laughs> yeah, right sure. it's like well i have everything i need right here and the way that they keep changing things up the way that it goes through trends like as uh gordon mentioned now we're in like this kind of funky retro trend that's been coming on for like a year or two now <laughs> which i did i did predict uh, <laughs> like yeah hearing that and then knowing that it won't stay like that forever that we'll get some other trend that will be popularized soon and then we'll have a completely different stuff look forward to it keeps it fresh and engaging well i think you would be agree that like that trend that started happening with like lottie da and everything from everglow like the i what would you call it like retro synth synth wave synth wave my, yeah like would be my term yeah i i'm so i think you even predicted that one happening before too but it's uh <laughs> when that finally rolled around i was like all right this could stay forever yeah. <laughs> like when, yeah. i was like every group should have a synth wave song now because it's but like even with that song you just mentioned um with luna's madonna right like that starts off in a way you're like oh this is going to be some kind of cool it was like a the way that that sample was being used it made it sound like it was going to be like a hip-hop type track yeah and then she just goes into this like full 80s synth pop chorus yeah, the, out of nowhere the, the pre like... chorus build up in that song like the way the synth is going right before like I, like genius song whoever wrote that song yeah. if i don't know did luna like write it or not but it's it's mm. an awesome song and i i was looking on youtube and it does not have the views it deserves so i think everyone knows what my plug will be <laughs> <laughs> so as far as i think that's good probably for that topic yes how this yeah to so, you makes you feel you're in charge man yeah yeah, yeah. It's, your, it's your rodeo so we're on <laughs> the bias conversation and this can be a mess <laughs> oh no all right there goes the episode this is the whole thing right here. <laughs> oliver you want to explain what a bias is I, how do you like what is like how well, to explain? okay so a bias is your favorite right yeah um and generally speaking, that refers to the member or members of a group that you like the most. And then you can kind of hierarchy that into like <laughs> your ultimate bias who reigns above all. And then you're just biases from each group. Um, but it's an interesting kind of phenomenon. I guess it's always been a thing. I feel like it's been a thing in pop music forever, right? Maybe when I was young and listening to All Saints and the Sugar Babes and Destiny's Child, I didn't, I didn't know who the members were. I didn't care. I just liked the songs. But for people who were maybe around of an old age at that point, they had their favorite member of NSYNC or the Backstreet yeah. Boys or whatever, right? Like that's that's normal. Um, but it's become more of a thing because of how much K-pop has such a collectability element to it. Like there's so much stuff you can yeah. get. It's not just having like one poster on your wall of David Cassidy or whatever. <laughs> it's like you you get so much extra stuff and then you can obviously find ways to interact with them and stuff like that. Um, so probably as soon as you guys started reacting to K-pop, there was probably like people in the comments immediately saying, picking up on who you might have mentioned and saying, oh, this is this person. I think they're your bias. Yeah. Right? They, people yeah. love to 
figure out who's Lisa who right away. Who. Everyone was like, "Oh, we like Lisa in the video. It's your bias. <laughs> you got yeah. it." And it's, which Lisa, fair enough, was technically my first bias. I guess you would say. <laughs> Do you? Uh, sure. I know with Goran, his he's quite never like hopped on having like a multiple well, I, bias. I just chain. have to say it's Backstreet for life. <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's it's funny because I, I remember there was a time uh, Honan was like uh, you know had his what, what was it? It was uh, it was in sync I think at the time. Oh and, man, how young was I? Oh man, he must have been <laughs> I don't know five years old, six years yeah, old. But he had. Like that. Yeah, it, uh, t- it was well, all about Tim like I, I, I don't remember. <laughs> Anyways, it's one of those ages. Um, but uh, he uh, definitely, I think you, you had Justin Timberlake. But it was like there was a thing going on at the time. They came out with like these these dolls, and that was the thing. I mean, I feel like I feel like anything you do successfully to market to individuals should have a team, right? It's just I mean, it, that's just how we're built. If you think about it, right? We, we love you know we have to have a football team. We have to have you know, uh, we have to pick a side politically. We have to, you know, there's always, and then, and then you're like, no, that's the best. So I, I think that that's kind of a, a driving force. Just like what makes us human is, is a bias, right? You have mm-hmm. to, you have to kind of pick a side. Um, so I love that. It's so like how popular it is in K-pop. Like mm. that. I really love it because it's like a totem. Said, because metalheads are such liars. They are the worst. They're like, I mean, especially like hardcore metalheads. They're like, they're like, no, dude, this guy's the best guitar player. And, oh, yeah, and that's... he recorded this album then. And there's this, a like, difference the only music in the... I'll ever listen to. And then they're serious. And so they're diehard. Like, don't get me wrong. Right. I, I love it. But any metalhead is like, oh, I just love it for this. It's like, you're full of shit. You just you talked about so something though in metal where it's <laughs> tiered so differently because there's like drummer metal heads and guitarist metal heads yeah. who are like yeah. specifically in that instrument in metal. For sure. Who For sure. some of them are the worst. Like people you could ever <laughs> meet online and talk to <laughs> like about so it's like they'll they'll try to say someone's whole career is terrible from like one bad live performance in that moment in their entire history. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just it's just a little different. I mean it what I mean by it is like they they try to say they don't obsess on it as much as they do, and mm. in the metalhead community, there are definitely people that oh, I'm definitely way, a Hetfield way, bias in the metal community. Yeah, oh, Hetfield's I mean, mine. Just, <laughs> so I I just love how openly appreciated the the bias is in K-pop because mm. I think the metalhead community lies about it a little too much. They're like. They just should just be like, yeah, no, they're my favorite. And like, yeah, instead of just always like sneakily protecting that band, it's like, no, this guy did this. It's like, mm-hmm. just just tell everyone they're your favorite and they'll know. <laughs> yeah, it's like maybe a big thing about it is like being protective or being ashamed maybe of the idea of being a fanboy. Yeah, I think that's right? exactly what it is. Yeah, It's like, especially for um, certain <laughs> scenes that revolve around music, you want to be cool. Yeah. Right, you want to act yeah. like, oh, I'm I'm aloof about this. Yeah, he's pretty yeah. dope, but this other guy's pretty cool too. It's whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but inwardly, you're like, nah, that guy fucking sucks. Like, <laughs> my guy's the best. <laughs> but but you don't want to be that guy. Whereas in K-pop, it's like it's much more acceptable to to be like, no, I think that my bias is the best dancer of her generation or or whatever. But at the same time, obviously, as with any fandom thing, it turn it can get nasty. And people start throwing it shade at each yeah. other for it but it's been that way since forever right like old hip- west west coast versus east coast hip-hop or yeah. xbox versus playstation exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. that's, that's whatever it might be <laughs> i i would i would argue that a bias is like the most human thing ever hmm. <laughs> Any, yeah, anything. <laughs> uh, before we move on from biases i just want to say like how big of a mess my bias list became so quickly <laughs> Like yeah. where where I was so sure, and then like next month, half that list was just like swatted by like so, different K-pop artists. That, that's, that's an interesting difference, I guess, is that because you were introduced to it so early like that, it was immediately you were like, oh, okay, I like this person from this group, and then you discover a new group, and you're like, I like this person from that group, and then naturally you start ranking them. Like yeah. you, you see, so you listen to Blackpink and you like Lisa, and then you listen to Red Velvet and you like Joy, and you're like, hold on, yeah, and then <laughs> right, and you're trying to figure out who's going where. Whereas for me, like I, I didn't care <laughs> about yeah. who the members were of any group for years. So like when I, I so it's actually like my 10 year K-pop anniversary this year, right? Yeah. And 
I remember listening to Girls' Generation this month, even when I when I first listened to the Girls' Generation, like my my friend who showed me to them was like, oh yeah, that's Sunny and that's Tiffany, and I was like, first of all, there's nine of them. I'm not gonna remember this, and, so, <laughs> and second of all, like whatever, I'm just enjoying the song. Like it doesn't matter to me. I don't remember the name of like some bassist from rock bands I used to listen to. It, I've, it doesn't matter to me. Exactly. So it, it's only recently like maybe since like 2017, I suppose it's not that recent anymore <laughs> that I started to think, okay, this one in this group is my favorite. I like her, especially I like him, especially whatever, but only, only last year did I really confirm having like an, an alt bias, which was, I guess, yeah, it just kind of, I suddenly started thinking to myself, okay, I like all of these different people, but then there's one that does rain yeah. above. Yeah, that's a, that, that is a good point because I wish I could go back to like hearing Red Velvet the first time and not knowing mm. who any of the members were and stuff. Like some of the experiences of like hearing certain songs the first yeah. time. For sure. well, that's good for bias. Just for anyone who doesn't know, Sun Me is my ultimate bias. <laughs> Just love, always I have to throw he, that in when it, I get a chance. So. I love how he turns to the mic to make it officially serious. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone bias. else, I'm gonna leave you to guess with the other team biases are <laughs> all right so topic four we got going here already nice moving things along pretty smooth for a first episode actually it's not nearly as clustered as i thought we were going to be i know oh this is generations that we're on now <laughs> so discuss the different generations of k-pop is what i put here and like which is your favorite generation which i mm -hmm. think those two things could basically be two different subjects yeah. So, are we on Gen Four now? Is that right? Yes. Okay. But the thing is, I should preface all of this by saying there is no agree, like set in stone, agreed upon thing. <laughs> yeah. It's not like JYP and Lee Soo Man come out and like hammer in a new thing. Like, <laughs> this is the new generation, everyone. Like <laughs> sound the bells. The let the people know. <laughs> this is like, Generation Four. Yeah, it, it doesn't work like that. So obviously, people have their own interpretation of when a generation is and i think some are certainly more easily agreed upon than others um there's also no set time frame so they, they've kind of nicely been six years except for gen two because in gen two we had this long period where some groups were debuting and you couldn't consider them part of the first gen but then it they're so far back it makes it really confusing so I guess, I guess for the sake of everyone who might watch, and for you guys, I'll try. I'll outline what my interpretation of the the four generations is. Um, so first of all, there's I would say what is called like proto K-pop, <laughs> which is stuff from like 1989, back when uh, SM was founded, uh, 1994 when JYP and Seotaeji and people like that were kicking around as artists. So that's like the the before times. <laughs> um, 1997 is when SM debut their first boy group, HOT, and that's the first gen start, basically. So you have a bunch of artists in that, like G.O.D., Finn KL, SES, uh, BOA, people all, like that. It was all Rain. letters. Yes, lots of acronyms. <laughs> lots and lots and lots of acronyms. Um, but yeah, so all those, those classic kinds of artists. Um, and that ends for me in 2003 when TVXQ debut. Shouts out to Honus Boy Changmin. Oh yeah, that's that's my that's my um, man. <laughs> so yeah, so they're in such a weird time. They're like right in the middle of this time where no one was really debuting and nothing was happening. And then TVXQ come in and it kind of changes how everything looked, sort of. But it, there was some scandals that went on, so they were kind of quiet. They had, they had three of the five members leave and so on. So it was a bit messy. 2005 we have the debut of super junior which is what i used to say was the start of second gen because they are a, the typical modern idol group i would say right if you think of what a boy group is you could pit it back to, to super junior who are still kicking today right it's crazy they're still um, <laughs> yeah so 2003 2005 start of second gen um which lasts for me up until 2012 um so i'd like to start trying to pin it on the debut of a group or or the release of a particular song like a, a song that just changes everything so for 2012 gangnam style comes out and i feel like that is the song that changed world perception of k-pop right so that mm -hmm. for me is the start of a new generation 
um around it was like a couple of months in between as well was the release of fantastic baby by big bang uh and exo's full debut which i feel like between those three things that's pretty much the start of a new, of a new gen right Definitely. and then fourth gen is where it gets messy <laughs> so some people just pin it they just say end of 2017 start of 2018 new gen but i i don't like that i like to try and put it on a particular moment um, some people say that it doesn't start until 2019 with uh, the debut of TXT and ITZY, which were within a couple weeks of each other. Um, for me, it's 2018 and it's Latata by Idol. That for me is the start of fourth gen because they were a, a new group that kind of came out of relative obscurity and just kind of took over a lot of things. It took, took the scene by storm, basically. and shifted a lot of attention to self-producing groups with... Uh, a very different kind of style, a different sort of concept, a different kind of sound to what we've been used to. So for me, that's where fourth gen starts and we're still in it today. Dude, that was awesome. I felt like I got like a history yeah. channel, like expertise, <laughs> like, because ex yeah. I did not like know any of the early like history of it or whatever. I just, obviously I know like um, who fourth gen groups are and stuff but mm. like yeah the way you that was that was really eloquently put i would say yeah no, that, that's what i'm I, here for right <laughs> <laughs> i want to i want to take that the audio clip from that and like sync it up to a full animation that like follows the timeline <laughs> yeah. like seriously and then just people would just like oh the, a brief understanding of the history of k-pop yeah right. <laughs> what, awesome. you'd have to do like that long title that they always do for those type of videos you yes. know like I'll, here's a full explanation of the generations of k-pop you know? I, I tried to write some i tried to actually like write it all down a, a, a while ago i started writing a big google doc about it and then i just kind of got bored <laughs> and left it i was i was like because i kept thinking i can't miss out this group i can't forget xinhua i can't forget sex keys and all these like first gen groups and in my head i was like who am I going to be upsetting? It's not like they have any fans nowadays. <laughs> like, who's, going to, who's going to come for me? Like, how dare you? <laughs> but... That's really funny. There's some like 50 year old woman who's going to come attack you and email yeah. you. <laughs> just like... <laughs> no, just I... like, of course. <laughs> I, off of that, I would say fourth gen, uh, Goran, I think is probably your favorite because you really love Idol. And I know that So Young tends to be like one of your favorite idols because she writes and produces like a lot of the own music that idol has coming out yeah and i mean just just in that time frame though if you look at it i think i've much the majority of what i've listened to is probably fourth generation music um only because of like when we started really listening and and the, the groups that we check out as new music i have gone back i mean obviously on our channel we've gone back and checked out quite a few things and and honan has two on lives all the time but um yeah i think uh, i don't know I think that's the majority of what I've listened to, so it, it would be hard to sit, to reference any other time period because I, I wouldn't even know the groups of the time, you know? Yeah, I mean, well, your channel basically syncs up almost exactly with the start of 4th Gen as it is, right? At least my yeah. my start of it. Because your first video was, um, was Did It Did It Do, right? Yeah. Yep. So that was um, two months after Idol debuted, if memory serves. <laughs> so, yeah. like, pretty much the, that exact time frame. So everything... So it's, people will always say hey react to this new thing that just dropped they're not going to be like hey you should go out and check out this old b-side of 2015 because <laughs> that's where the real good shit is at but it's so you're naturally you're going to have much higher saturation of fourth gen content i'm conflicted exactly. on the generations thing because i have a special place in my heart for like girls generation and then yeah but that was like that was That's... like twenty what when we did that guitar video. Yeah, <laughs> I remember twenty. That is I like the even... only K-pop group I would have <laughs> known from that, you know. But there's still yeah. like a special place there because it's I guess technically the first one, even yeah. though there's it's just the same. A long, it's the same like, for yeah. me. They'll always, they'll always be up there, like always. And like the is Gen Three Red Velvet. Yeah. Yeah. So I I would have to say Red Velvet probably sells Gen Three for me just because yeah. I don't listen to any other K-pop artists more than Red Velvet. And then I'm... Dreamcatcher, they fall under Gen 3? 
Yes. Okay. So Anyth- yeah. anything <laughs> before 2018 is so, yeah. Dreamcatcher, especially as Mink's been around since 2015. Oh yeah. <laughs> They've been about. <laughs> I still remember us going to check that out, and I was just like, "This can't be the same group." <laughs> oh yeah. No. What a trip, right? Yeah. How about you, I mean, Oliver? You, you I know for you. It, what, oh, sorry. Go continue on. Uh, it was like you see groups that have debuted before and members have then left and other groups disbanded and then they re-debut again and it, it makes things confusing like you have groups that debut in 2017 which i would say makes them third gen and then their members re-debut in 2019 which makes them fourth gen and i'm like where do you you have the issue with uh, with luna as well for example because you have them having their solos dating back to 2016 slap bang in the middle of third gen and then you have the actual full group debuting much later in 2018, which would be for me part of fourth gen. So it's like, so maybe they have some third gen members, and then the group is what is. Yeah, yeah, it's it gets confusing. confusing. <laughs> Especially like I actually with the Luna thing, not to go too long on that, but those like pre full group debuts are like to be some of the best music they put out like the mm. chew uh heart attack and then there was um i'm blanking on the names but each member's like individual solo debuts were awesome and yeah. then um i i do like luna music but it's to me some of those solo songs are like a way more creative style mm. than some of the full group releases that is not an uncommon opinion, so yeah. <laughs> don't worry. No, I'm not going to come for you. <laughs> no, I'm not going to get attacked in the night. From the the so I, I suppose uh, I'm Gen 3 as far as like what I would describe as my favorite, even though I listen to music from all the generations. And Goran probably knows Gen 4 music the best. But for you, Oliver, I'm very interested in what you think your favorite generation of K-pop is um so i, I guess it, it, the, it's always going to be an it depends a, a longer answer but a lot of my favorite k-pop songs fell in gen 3 like 2014 2015 that kind of time um but a lot of the songs that would were, were done by second gen artists so <laughs> it's kind of a mix so but yeah that that the second gen girl groups that debuted in like 20 2000 well, I'll say include Girls' Generation and Wonder Girls to go back to 2007, but like 2009, 2011, and 12, like EXID, AOA, Stella, Sister, all those kinds of groups. The songs they were dropping through the middle of the 2010s, those are like some of the best ones for me, for sure. For sure. Gen 3, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what did we have? I can't in... wait to see the comments below in this video. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be like, Honan, stop. Pick, pick your generation. <laughs> pick your generation now. <laughs> okay, so now we're on plug your favorite artist. So this is the last topic, guys. We we actually went pretty Episode one. Through here. Yeah. Done it. <laughs> Pl- plug your favorite artists or new upcoming releases in K-pop. Who wants to go first? <laughs> well, I All mean, right. everyone knows mine. Idol. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, yeah, but you have to... <laughs> you gotta plug to it. What? You gotta sell it, Gordon. Oh, yeah. You're selling okay. it. You're to be me. selling it. End call. No, I'm just kidding. Mic drop. <laughs> For, I, I want to say... Um, look... Everyone knows, like, I could talk about Sun Me or all that stuff, but I'm going to talk about something real here, something everyone should know about. And if you don't know, like, (laughs) I I was going (laughs) to... Now you know. (laughs) So, Hello Venus, okay? (laughs) Let me tell you about the most slept-on release in K-pop, all right? Wiggle Wiggle, okay? (laughs) And listen, this is serious. I'm not even joking around. All right, so Hello Venus Wiggle Wiggle to me is like in that upper echelon top five tier. And when I see like the disparity of views and how they're not a group anymore, it makes me sad inside, like legitimately, because I feel like they are one of those groups that deserved a lot of like the same kind of popularity as maybe groups around the same time as them and everything with that release and i understand that release had a bit of like scandal to it right because they weren't allowed to do the choreography live Mm -hmm. and everything like that but yeah 
if anyone who's watching this doesn't know that song, uh, please go listen to it. Click on the video maybe 10 times. Keep that view to counter going up because Brave Girls had a huge resurgence and I know they were still an active group, but <laughs> let's make it happen. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Bring let's back wiggle, bring wiggle, back Hello Venus, okay? Like Brave Sound, please bring it back, all right? <laughs> And then yeah, you've done listen it once, to you've done it once <laughs> Brave Sound. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, do it again. That's all I'm asking for. All right, either one of you want to plug it? Oliver, please go ahead. Okay, well, so I guess I'll, I'll shout out what would be the maybe my like three of my like songs that I mentioned from that period that I'm like I still love so much to this day. Like every time I listen to them, I'm still just like, God damn, this is good. So those would be Wild by Nine Muses. Vibrato by Stella and One Black Night by Wonder Girls. Like through the 2013, 2014, 2015, respectively. If you haven't heard those songs, go listen to them. Uh, appreciate and also accept the various traumatic things that happened, especially to, to Nine Muses and Stella, but it is what it is. The songs are great. Um, and I guess obviously I'm now obligated to plug what I like. Recently, we already talked about uh, Luna's Madonna, which I thought was excellent. Uh, I'll also give a shout out to Yukika, who dropped a Korean single and a Japanese single in the space of a week uh, called Loving You and Tokyo Lights. Go check those out. She's a city pop artist and super adorable and very cool, very chill. Um, to give a shout out to uh, to some boys, because, you know, boys do deserve some love too <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I really enjoyed uh, Golden Child's recent comeback and their single Dada. I would I would recommend checking that one out. That's pretty cool stuff. Uh, and of course, I have to give a shout out to my girls, Nature, my girls above all girls. Um, they tease that they are preparing for a comeback. It has been, in half an hour, it will have been 484 days <laughs> since the last comeback. <laughs> Not that I'm keeping count. <laughs> um, the last comeback was Girls, which uh, both of you two absolutely loved. Uh, and hopefully the next one will be just as good and can get them some more deserved recognition. Oh, yeah. And please, if um, Girls English version, anytime anyone who's <laughs> listening who has the power to put that on spotify i think that would be a wonderful wonderful decision <laughs> to, to make. Uh, but i just wanted to say i think it's funny oliver that we both talked about like our love of gen 3 and i think did we both plug gen 2 things as our like plug is is hello venus and wonder uh, uh, girls uh, gen venus 2 gen, hello, hello venus is gen 3 don't worry about oh, it oh are they okay i'm good i'm safe You're okay <laughs> oh my gosh I don't know if well, there was anything you lads had to continue on. No, no. I just, I just wanted to say, um, you know, any anyone who's just watching this for the first time, uh, we're definitely going to be uploading this to, you know, all all major platforms. I'm, I'm going to be uploading, um, so it will be a, a podcast uh, as well. But I think, I think, ideally, what we're going to try to do is, is more of a live scenario, right? Kind of kind of try and shake that up i mean as, as best as we can i know sometimes we're just going to record but um anyone just watching for the first time let us know what you think please feel free to comment um we we will encourage thoughtful and creative conversations below um that doesn't mean all-out war so you know if, <laughs> if you if you have an opinion on something please express it but um we, we don't want anything rude or lewd below and uh yeah that's, that's now, all I now you're just with. asking for it <laughs> when you ask for it not to happen then it means 10x it's gonna come out <laughs> uh, no no and i just want to say you know anyone new to the channel you guys if you're not new to the channel you know you know myself and you know honan uh, but if many of you do know oliver you have just you've never you've never met him uh in person like this so many of you know that he's he's moderates on our channel on our on our discord um he's, he's pretty much og day one and uh he knows a hell of a lot more about this space and it, the only reason we're able to probably do and continue over the years of what we've done is from the comments and and information that oliver has given us so that's why we kind of put all this together on this on this k-pod podcast and i'm, I'm just really excited i think it's gonna be really cool oh Made me cry. <laughs> Very sweet, Gord. Yes, I think this falls under like lore master from the right. <laughs> <laughs> you throw finger. Arms. <laughs> 
<laughs> building off uh what gordon was saying yeah in the future uh it'll be interesting to see how that works we'll we'll do like live on twitch sometimes and twitch chat can give us questions yeah, yeah. live for the podcast so it'll be very <laughs> interesting to see how that works in the future kind of breaking ground is <laughs> All right, well, that, I I'm think sure that, nothing can go wrong. <laughs> yeah, nothing. <laughs> uh, I think that wraps it up, right, for K-pop episode yep. one. Episode one. Episode Down. one, guys. It was it was smooth. <laughs> I was I was surprised. I was I was expecting way more of a mess, but we did a. I'm gonna clap and say we did a good job. I'm gonna tap all of us on the back. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so,